basically we are seeing that science in our ecosystem or what we are working in the environment we can say that discovery is science in the sense that its pursuit of knowledge that means you want to know something you want to understand something you want to extend the reach of what you know so when you try to do that you come up with discoveries in various areas they could be in physical sciences they could be in mathematics as we saw that they could be in any of these areas like the principle of evolution or the prime numbers discovery of prime numbers is that right someone came with the idea that there is something like a prime number did he discover prime numbers did he created prime numbers or they were there and he brought them to light that there are certain properties which are there with them so when you talk about discovery we essentially talk about knowledge the pursuit of knowledge and putting that knowledge in a codified way which other people can then learn and use invention when we talk about invention we talk about technology as against science yeah sorry yeah so we talk about science and then talk about technology including of that in also include engineering what do you mean by that when you say technology what does it mean somebody said recipe or something is that right who was here somebody said recipe so when you say technology what do we do the technology means there is something now which has got some power to do perform to do something which is not just in our minds not an imagination but something which can be done whether it is done by we saw last class from steam engine to search engine whether it is in a physical world or whether it is in a mental world or there is something which can be worked out can be done that is what we call invention invention has got some power some faculty to do something so that is the second thing what about innovation so we got knowledge we got power or capability what is the third thing that we really need to sorry application of technology certainly it requires application of technology but for what purpose there has to be some purpose for that yeah what is that purpose excellent useful to society that means what we called last time it must create value that is there is something now which has got and innovation will have all the components it will have new knowledge it could have new techniques or new instruments but ultimate purpose is that it must be useful for someone it must create value and someone must be, must be prepared to pay for that value in a positive way remember that that's what we call a business so keep that in mind and ultimately the innovation will require all the thing it is not something which is water tight it has to be built upon all these aspects so therefore like we mentioned knowledge new concepts can be discovered but importantly by applying our imagination by applying our creativity we can bring out inventions but ultimately what we need for a business is the innovations that can be as i mentioned product service experiences anything that will create value for the people for which they are willing to pay only then we say that it's an innovation of course not all innovation succeed some of the innovations might not reach or might not achieve what expected by these entrepreneurs and they may not then succeed but the attempt is basically create something useful 
create a superior value and based on that value create a business. So, let us quickly go through some something all of you know when you say discovery we got a good example Michael Faraday what did you do? What laws he discovered? Faraday discovered what? The laws of electromagnetic induction electronic forces that is what Faraday managed to study, find out what is happening and ultimately discover the laws for which he also did experiments with the magnets and electric currents and all those things. So, that is what he came up with and he found out that there is something which is present in the nature properties of certain materials and certain forces which they can work. So, this is really the discovery which Faraday came up with 150 years back or whatever it is and all of you study that in your class whether school or later that there is something which we can know that there is interaction between electricity and magnetism and they can work on each of them and produce impact or effect or result in the other element. So, that is the discovery that Faraday came up with, but Faraday was a great scientist, he did not stop only coming with the law, he went beyond that and he came up with the not only the laws, basic knowledge, but the invention where he built up a wheel in which he tried to apply the laws that he had formulated and learned and actually created a circuit through which he could see the motion of the device in which current is passed and there is a magnet. This is the horseshoe magnet here and this is the disc which is being moved into that magnetic field. So, he actually created a device which was based on the knowledge that he created and this is what we are seeing. So, that is the invention he came up with based on his knowledge and today what was this small apparatus on the same principle we have got this big generators of the electricity that we are using, but the basic principle is same. So, that is the invention. What is another discovery that people had that almost 200 years back or more than that Humphrey Davy, English scientist what he discovered that if you go on heating certain materials at some point not only they are becoming hot, but they are actually emitting light. That means, there is some properties in some material which can actually give out light if you give them enough heat for enough time. That is the discovery of incandescence that is light can be brought out in case you try to do that. So, that is the discovery that we got. And what is the invention of this principle? Already you mentioned that the electric bulb for which Faraday has been very famous, but they were bulbs even before Faraday, uh, even before Edison and what was Edison's contribution? That he not only came up with a better material, he also came up with long life, better control. So, all those things were added by Thomas Edison and he created the bulb which could really be applied which can really work for a long time. So, you can see on one side how to generate electricity that was an invention, how to create light by applying heat was an invention. So, what is innovation now? You have seen both these things. What is the innovation? You can see here people were using 
different lights you noted that last time. So, innovation was anywhere it is that means not only I got this invention of how to do things I am now offering this big benefit for all the people that at your fingertips you have got a control of creating an environment which will actually make day out of night what is normally night can be a day. Can you read this? Do not attempt to light with a match simply turn key as you enter the door simply turn the key switch on that light and Edison is telling them that you can get your source of light. So, when you say innovation it builds on this knowledge and inventions or what it has done actually create a system which will make people to easily use and apply these principles for their benefits and are people willing to pay for supply of electricity? Are they willing to pay for buying bulbs whether bulbs or CFL or LED? So, that is what innovation really is that means it builds on the knowledge and invention but creates a platform or creates a system which makes them usable in a way which creates value for the people for, for which they are ready to pay. So, that is what we need to keep in mind in entrepreneurship we are talking about innovation. So, no matter whatever are the situations you might come with a big invention, but unless you reach to the level of value creation, value delivery is not going to be in practice. We can take other examples. So, you have got invention of file compression. You can compress the files whether it are these are audio files for example. So, that is an invention that is file compression, but what is innovation? The mp3 player that we have got is an innovation because you know we are applying this technology or this new knowledge to create something which people are going to find useful have music on the go or get instead of only few songs thousands of songs with them and therefore, the mp3 player would be an innovation. So, keep that in mind we are talking about innovation and when you say innovation the basic requirement is that there is at least someone out there who would like to use it and who would like to pay for it and hopefully that payment is going to exceed the cost of doing that thing offering that thing to the others. So, unless this value exchange is there either happening or expected to happen there is no innovation. So, that is what innovation is critical for entrepreneur and you are going to therefore, want to understand innovation in the best possible way. So, great. So, now that we know what innovation is, we also saw in our earlier session the role and the benefits it creates. Now, really we need to go for and find out how do you really look for innovation and make innovation happen because as an entrepreneur that is our ultimate job. The real goal is to create innovation and offer it for the public. So, how do you really go for looking for where innovation can be there or if you are thinking something how can you come to a level where you are going to go beyond something tangible which people would like to have. So, to look for innovation you want to do you have some idea what do you do? Does the idea directly can be applied or you need to take it forward to a situation where you can really make it useful, yeah. 
So how can you go for an innovative idea into something tangible, something on which we can create actually a business, yeah. Hmm? Hypothesis that is absolutely right, any new venture is an hypothesis and needs to be tested, validated and applied, yeah, but how do you do that? How do you even come over, come with an hypothesis? There has to be some base for it, isn't it? So where does it come from? Yeah. Look for a problem, great, wonderful. I think that is definitely one of the most important starting points. Look for a problem. What else? Great, very good. Yeah. What else? We are living in a world in which constantly there are things happening, is that right? Things happening to us, things happening to our friends and relatives or there is the constant movement of knowledge, news, is that right? So how do you look for innovation? So there are two things which we want to understand. One is what type of innovation and second is where do you look for innovation? The left column it has got four basic ways innovation can happen in an enterprise or an economy and that is like we saw invention is basis for many of these innovations. Somebody comes with a tool or instrument which can be worked on and therefore invention can form a basis for that innovation or there is extension. What is extension? You already have got a basic thing, can you make it better? We saw that, we saw three things in our last class. What was that? Breakthrough innovation, yeah, efficiency innovation and the evolution innovation, is that right? Yeah. So when you say extension, you can either improve the efficiency or come with a better version which is extending the original invention that you had and therefore you can get a better innovation. Duplication, is duplication innovation and do you see examples of duplication, yeah, what do you see? You always say that innovation is something new something which is not there and here we are seeing that duplication can also be an innovation. If so, how and where, is that right, sorry, more cost efficient, okay, what is, okay, in some way yes, but most common when you say duplication is applying from region 1 to region 2, like examples, so these are some of the biggest companies right now in India which have been set up by the entrepreneurs, they are growing very fast, they are doing big business. But how original are they? Are they first time in the world? They come up with the basic business model or idea for that. We have got that. So what they have done? They have taken the basic way of doing things, new things which were brought up by Expedia or Amazon. But since these companies were not in India or they cannot be in India or in other regions, the local entrepreneurs have actually create a similar business here and are doing extremely well, is that right? Is it good or bad, sorry, yeah, it is, it is, it is innovation because there is a large segment of market 
people who are not able to have it today which is now available for them because of these people. Okay, when you say innovation we always say that is there a value available for someone who is willing to pay for it. So there was which was not there of course Amazon now has come to India after 20 years or so. But what they did they used the same model but made it available for a large segment of people which did not have access to that you are right it is not something which is innovative in the global sense or really in the classic sense but you can see that are the company doing well are their entrepreneurs have they been rewarded like we asked in our first class so it satisfies all those criteria but yes even though it is not a global innovation for this region it has been a massive innovation and people have accepted that and the entrepreneurs have been rewarded because of that. So that is the duplication as I mentioned to you it is not a global when one region is taking advantage where it is not available and creating that. So that is why it is an innovation because lot of people are accepting it. The last is synthesis. What is synthesis? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Frederick Smith. Yeah. Yeah. That will come more actually in the last one that is synthesis. That means you will bring innovations from different sectors and put them into your sector to create a completely new way of doing things or it might do many more things than was possible earlier. Today like if you say mobile phone, it is got synthesis of several inventions, technologies have brought been together into a single device or like you say that the logistics that he found, he could create a new system and apply it for not military but for civilian and other domains. So synthesis is the working on several technologies or inventions which are in different domains but you can put them together into a specific single domain that we can call as a synthesis. So you can see that innovation can be based on completely new first time global innovation like we will always talk about you can talk about always Apple and PC. Did it really discover the PC? What did it do? Or latest example the iPad. How it is the synthesis of several inventions brought together to eliminate some things and to add some things to create the offer or recipe that you are talking about which will give people that this is what I am giving you. Like we mentioned that the entrepreneur is always telling a story to the potential customer that this is my story, take this, this will give you A, B, C, D but this may not give you F, G, H but this is something which is going to help you. So that is what Apple has done. So that is what is the synthesis part of it. So this is what innovation finally gets reflected when you use that device but importantly is that where and how do you look for innovation. So there are on the right column we are mentioning that these are possible sources of innovation. Is it a formula that you do this and things are over? No. This is just a basic framework which can be of use or which has been found out to have been applied in many cases but it is up to you, your imagination, your creativity, you can go beyond that. But at least the basic framework is something you need to keep at the back of your mind when you are looking for 
something better, something novel, something innovative. So what are the seven things? Unexpected occurrences. That is something has happened which was not expected. As I mentioned to you that we are looking at things which are continuously happening around and you need to be alert and if that is happening, can you think about something and do something about it. What did Ola gaps do? You will find something happening. Yeah. Yes. It was the first radio cap service that we had. The Meru cabs, you have heard about Meru cabs? Yeah. How did Meru cabs come about? Okay, think about that. The second is incongruity. What is an incongruous thing? When you say incongruous, what do you mean? You heard about this term? When you say something is incongruous, what do you mean? That it looks really odd. It is not a happened, but has happened. So, if something like that happens, we need to look at it. Or process needs that we require some things for doing things properly, either efficiently or with a better yield. When you say process, what are the parameters we look for? In a process we talk about the speed, the accuracy, the quality, is that right? When you talk about speed, bottleneck, all those things are the process problems and if you can think of something, address some of the problems, there could be an innovation. Industry and market changes, have you seen changes in industry and market in the last few years? We saw the example of what do you see? We saw the Federal Express example, we saw telephone and mobile and postcard, did you see that? Are there changes in telecom and other sectors in the last few years? So if industries are going to be affected by this, is there some way for us to be innovative? Then change in demographics, that is the people, all of us, we are here what are the things that are happening? Are things changing for us? When you say demographics, it is both by way of numbers, their percentages and proportion, distribution and of course the quality aspects. So demographics is a very important factor, the way people look at things, the way people behave and going to that the perceptual changes. That means how people perception change. Does it happen? What you are thinking 5 or 10 years back, are you thinking exactly the same way or now you are thinking in a different way? If that is happening to a large number of people, is that a basis for us to do something different for them? And lastly, the knowledge based concepts. We saw that right in the beginning, discovery, invention and innovation. When there is new knowledge coming up, in the world, whether it is biotech or nanotechnology, is there some way it can be used? Is it possible to use that and based on that, can you come up with something which is not there today? So these are really the basic ideas on which we can work on. As I mentioned to you, this is not a formula or checklist that if you had done this, you got the answer and there is nothing beyond this. That is not the case at all. This is just a important framework which can give you some triggers, at least you can start on your path and then you can see what are the possibilities. So there are these examples I mentioned to you within the industry, there are two categories we are putting in within the industry that means people in that industry or students of that industry would know that that is 
something unexpected, something which really is not under, uh, easily understood to why it is happening, process as I mentioned to you and lastly the changes in the market. So let us see that demographics, perception and the new knowledge. So all these seven things, the first four were in the certain industry or sector, the last three are in the general domain of the knowledge, institutes, society, all those possibilities. So let us see example of this occurrences which are not expected, this is a very famous example most of you should actually know it, this example of the 3M scientist, 3M is the world's biggest company in the materials related innovations and applications, their scotch tape that you have seen is that right, the transparent tape which you can use for sticking things. So working on adhesives which is their core strength and what they are looking for when you say something has to stick to something, it has to be strong and permanent. So adhesive has to have strong bond, but instead of these scientists what they found, the adhesive is not at all strong, it is a very weak adhesive that it just sticks, but if you peel it, it can come out. So it was totally something which they did not expect, they were looking for a strong adhesive and what they got was something was very weak and therefore they were almost ready to throw it away and work on something else. But then one of the scientists, Art Fry, in fact, what did he think that what I can do with this weak adhesive and what did they come up with? You seen this, the post-it notes that became a such a big product for 3M that 3M is now known for the post-it. All of you have seen the post-it notes. So the basic idea in that was you can take it off and you can stick somewhere and after job is done you can even take it off. You can use it on any surface whether it is a book, page of a book or it is on a some table or it is on some fridge. So the occurrence was unexpected, they wanted a very strong bond which will not be easily removed but what they came up with is that a very weak bond, but someone at least had an idea that what this weak bond can work for, where it can be useful, which application can be helpful for the people. So that is the way that if something happens, it is not expected, can you look at it and make it apply somewhere else. So that is one of the biggest innovations that we saw in last 20-30 years. So does it stop there when you people found that there is something like a weak bond which can be applied and removed at will, what happens? This one property, can you use it somewhere else? Like we saw that extension, is that right? When you say innovation, this was the original invention that a weak adhesive can be used, but can it be extended to other areas? Yeah. There will be innovations in different fields. Is there any connection? Yeah. So you can see that if you got this adhesive property, you can make this. What are the conventional way of applying on your forehead these kumkums, seeing your grandparents or grandmothers applying actually the powder and wax or something. So you can see that someone thought that this is a big business, any idea how big business these bindis are in India, 5, 50, 100, 500 crore, any idea? So there was someone who thought that what they are using for something else, I got a plan. So it is not only convenience, 
it is also the fashion and other aspects which can be brought about. So that is what when something is happened which is not expected and then can you extend it, it depends on your innovation. In congruities we mentioned that what is this? For almost 30, 40 years in the shipping industry, what they are looking for? The ship, the big ships, mercantile ships, they were coming with bigger and bigger ships, they were coming with engines which would have large capacity, they were looking for high fuel efficiency and they were all doing these experiments in the shipping industry, but what they found? that all these things were not giving them the returns that they would have expected. If they have invested so much into this, there is no return for them in the faster speed and larger engines. So what really is the problem? Yeah. If you do everything right, the sheep is moving much faster, but the profit is not much higher. There is some problem somewhere, we need to find a way out, yeah. What happened? It was in this situation that an innovator, Maclean, you have seen this, what is this? This is the MFC, the marine freight container, that means it is a container which is loaded onto a ship. What was the earlier way of putting things on the ship? You will put them into boxes or bags, is that right? So what happened here? When you see this now, the container ships, the huge container ships which carry hundreds of thousands of these containers and this was Maclean, Malcolm Maclean who was in a truck business and when he was looking at the ship industry, what did he find? He, find, he found that because of these faster speeds and big, bigger engines, they are taking more goods and they are going fast, but ultimately what does shipping involve? Loading and unloading. You take some cargo somewhere and you give it somewhere else and he found that while the time between the ports had come down to some extent because of these efficiencies, the time at the port was not changed and the total economy is driven by whole cycle that is right from port A to port B back to port A, how much time is taking this cycle and he found that the cycle time was not change much because the loading unloading was not really affected by the faster ships and the bigger ships. So if you see that from point A to point B it takes 10 days to actually make the trip and takes 3-4 days to unload and 3-4 days to pack, what is the total time we have got? 16 to 18 days and even if this you improve and bring down to not even 9 or 8 or 7, which is a big efficiency change, what is the overall effect? It is very marginal. So therefore, Maclean came up with this idea of containers and what really found out that it was the bottlenecking at the port which was stopping them to get all the benefits. So the big insight that Maclean gave was that the real costs were not in doing something but the real cost is in not doing something at the port and what does the container do, what the container give us? that you keep everything ready, what is to be loaded or unloaded, it all can be done 
instead of 3 4 days can be done in a single day and then you can see the enormous impact of the efficiency. So, the container that we have got the marine container which is 40 feet by 10 feet or 20 feet it can pack up everything that is required and it is ready for the ship as soon as it comes it can be loaded within no time and also you can unload anywhere and the ship can start with the new cargo. The process needs as I mentioned you talk about process most of the process has got some limitations like speed, yield, quality, energy requirements or environmental hazards, output, safety. So, all these are the problems that we face is there some way we can address these problems there could be some chance of improvement. So, you can see that we had a very classic example of making alcohol you can see that if you make alcohol in normal way how much you can make no matter whatever you do there is no way you can get alcohol which is more than 95 percent pure that is the chemical bottleneck that you have in your normal process. But if you want 100 percent alcohol what do you do? These engineers came up with the new idea where, where they added a third component into the 95 percent mixture and actually created two new components which can be many to 100 percent alcohol. So, that is the process innovation which could give because there are many applications in medicine and other areas where you require absolutely 100 percent no water alcohol. Industry market scenario we mentioned that industries have undergone big change in the last few years is that right? What are the industry which changed big way? The power, the telecom, what about airlines? Have they changed? There has been big change into this industry and how they have changed? There is a rapid growth technologies have come together especially the computing telecom technologies coming together mobile phones deregulation the government said that earlier they were doing everything now private companies can do lot of new things and therefore airlines telecom. So, all these things came up in a big way what is the reason for them? The deregulation the changes in the industry and we had innovations in them now after they have been opened up yes we saw just now example earlier airlines the low cost carriers the Deccans and now the indigos and all they change the way people travel or the telecom sector all the services that we have got based on the telecom. In fact, I do not know if anyone knows a company called ICAN. Look at the ICAN company. It's a company set up by one of our faculty members, Professor Sonar, which is basically taking use of the automobile, mobile phone, and telecom sector possibilities, and it has become a it has brought new services for this sector. So, because of these changes one can have big things and people can then innovate on them and offer like make my trip had airlines not regulated deregulated you can only one airline in the country would a company like make my trip would have come out there was no chance for such innovations. Demographic change I think very big very important factors especially the composition of the population and their characteristics. And we know that we can with a good accuracy we can predict how and where they will go in the next 5, 10, 20 years there is a reasonable idea that what the country or even the world would be in the next 15, 20 years. So, we have got our ideas that where we are right now 
what is happening just one factor what is the average life that Indians live now any idea sorry 55 you know we are on the lower side 70 is on the higher side so somebody can get an answer correctly very soon yeah so when we became independent in 1947 our average expectancy was only 39 years that we expected on an average an Indian would live for 39 years and today it has gone to 65 years. So that is a massive change in the demographics does it offer us some possibilities so this is what is happening we know that as people become old or they live longer life what they would require and we can work on this. In fact, on a global scale, we can see that by 1970s, 40 years back, there was as the countries grew, all the countries like Europe and USA and Japan, the advanced countries, what do you find in them? As the countries grow, the population rate goes down. In almost all countries, countries like Germany, they might have even negative rates of growth. Why it happens? Across the globe you will see that the faster and more the country grows and become richer, the population growth slows down, the number of births comes down, also death also come down because of the better health and all. But what happens? So people saw that there is bound to be now big problem that birth rates are going down and people want to be now better and better in all respects including health and education and therefore instead of you saw that in our earlier class the cotton factory the employees what was that you had the children working in that would that happen today people would be having more and more education and therefore the economies, advanced countries, they came to know that this is bound to be the situation and therefore they will not get workers in the way they were used to and especially the entry of workers will not be there. So what impact can it have or what can people foresee and do? Would they do something? Yeah. Great, yeah. So that you are uh, looking at them as customers and potential users. So that is very good, and we will see some examples. Right now, you are looking for from the point of view of the industry and employers, what does it mean to them that they would not be able to get the numbers and the salary that they can pay easily to them in the same way that they were used to get. So, what happens? The Japanese were the earliest to know about this and as you know that Japanese society very advanced in terms of education and lifestyle and they knew right in 70s that it is going to be the lots of these operations where you cannot get labor you will need to automate and robotics become a big tool for them and not only for them now the world over all the innovations which came in robotics now have been applied in almost all the major sectors. The next is very important changes in perception that is the way people look at things or think about things has changed. Do you have any examples has it really changed? Yeah. Do you look at things the same way earlier and now different? Yeah. people are afraid of buying online things and now they are buying it as a regular customer, regular things. Yeah, good example. Other examples? In fact, if you saw the ad there on the Flipkart ad for buying online, remember that? This, the kids working like adults and exchanging dialogues, so that was really the way to convince people that it is 
safe and all right to buy online. Yeah, what else? Any other thing? Have you seen changes? Do you hear dialogues from older people like this was not the way we were or this was not the way things were, is that right? So let us see some examples. As I mentioned to you first, that was the first was the higher life extension that people are living now much longer. So they would be doing things now in a different way than what they were doing earlier. Earlier they were thinking themselves about only 40, 50 years, but now they want to go beyond that. So if they are going to live longer, what should they do? They should lead things as they are or they should really lead even longer lives in a better way, in a more comfortable or appropriate way. You can see that the impact, is it there? Just a few years back, were there magazines for healthcare? Was there a big market for jogging, apparel and shoes? You can see that now today more and more people are buying things which were not there because people knew that this is what there will be requirement. The treadmills or the indoor cycles, all those things have come in the last few years because now people not only are living longer, they want to live better, more healthy lives as they increase their livelihoods. They also want to remain young. So what they do? You have seen all these big ads now, oil, edible oil without cholesterol and all is that right? So people are coming with better and better products or they want to, you can see that Godrej and all companies, there was hardly any product like hair dye in India 20 years back, is that right? Now with the L'Oreal and all these people, they are coming in a big way. The perception is changing. Earlier what is to happen, if I am growing old, that is okay, that is there. But today's, it is not that, they want to have a better life, both inside and outside. This is a very interesting thing. Somebody mentioned about this, what is happening? For generation back, when they used to buy house, almost about to retire. They used to think that when I am retiring, I will get my PAF or I will get some big chunk of money and with that I can buy a house and then I will keep it for my family. Today youngsters who are working in corporates, hardly 3-4 years, they are willing to buy a car or a low or a house, is that right? The perception has changed. Earlier people used to be bit cautious about taking a loan, that should you really take a loan, what will be the problem, but today now with the structuring of the entire financial services and the people's perceptions, people's belief that we should enjoy now and not wait for 10, 20 years for that, is that right? So these people are coming up with new ideas which have become a very big business, the cars, the credit cards, the housing, this has become, housing.com, is it a big success? Our own alumni is setting it up. So you need to find out the underlying factors that why it is happening. It is not that just you start something and hope that it will work. You need to understand and see that why it is happening. The last is new knowledge which all of you know is the very big thing but also very difficult thing and why is that? Knowledge is discovered, pursued, codified and it takes long time from knowledge to the stage of we saw that discovery, invention and innovation. We saw that it is a long journey and therefore when you come with some new knowledge, what problems are there? Either it takes a long time to really reach practical applications or sometimes it may go, may not really be useful at the end of it and is really no way to know that is it really going to 
work or not. So that is the big challenge but it is always at the base of it new knowledge ultimately is the requirement for inventions and the innovations but it can take really long time. So therefore there has to be lots of ways looking at things. In fact you can see that the computer which came after the world war 1946 almost all the basic knowledge was available almost 30 years back what really a computer should be what it can do how it can work and operate but actually the operating computer required 30 years to reach the level of practical applications and therefore this knowledge innovation is very important very critical but the toughest one to bring it to the market. We have got examples of this superconductivity what is that? What superconductivity? Any idea? You studied? What does it give us? What is the idea behind that? At certain stage under certain conditions we can have zero resistance and infinite conductivity for our systems or the conductors or wires that we are having is that right. So this knowledge has been there almost now for 100 years 1910-1920s people really understood and mentioned that this is something which we can do. But how many applications are there in market today which utilize the superconductivity? Any examples you can give? Applications, practical applications, are there some, none or many? There are of course some applications but they are very restricted, certain strategic use where cost may not be a big problem but the performance is very critical for certain applications and that is being used but today even now after 100 years the knowledge is there but there is no innovation which has gone to the market in a big way. On the other hand we have got more recent example of biotech when was DNA discovered first time any idea? In the 50s we had the DNA when we got Watson and Crick came up with the helical model triple helix, double helix and then we got. But today already we have got things in market because of the genetic engineering. We have got drugs which are there like insulin which is to be brought by animal source. Today we have got insulin made synthetically by genetic engineering and today it is in market. So you can see that depending on the knowledge, how it is brought out, how it is studied, where it can go, the innovation can come in some cases or may have difficulty in the other cases. But knowledge is one of the most important drivers for innovation but it will take long time to do that. So that is what we saw those 7 things. We will just quickly catch up, remember that the 7 things what you talk about innovation. The first was unexpected occurrences, something happened which was not expected, very good. Second was in Congress situation, third process needs, very good. Fourth, sorry, yeah, then the other three ones, what was that? Demographic changes, very good. Then the perception, perceptual changes and finally new knowledge. So you can see that all these things are happening continuously and let us take an example which will capture some of these things. It is a very interesting slide because especially linked to the last 
the knowledge part. What do you see here? What does the table tell us? The year of invention, the technology which made that possible, but actually finally put into market and used in a big way on a large scale. This is what has happened. You can see that the scientists and the engineers were working continuously. So, they brought to this level. So, that is where our starting slide, what was that? Discovery, invention and ultimately innovation which can really make it to market. So, you see some trend here. What is the trend you are seeing? Do you see any trend or it is just all random? Time lag is coming down and why is so? Why is it so? Change in perception, yeah, more important, sorry, information, yeah, very good, yeah, what else? See, this is cumulative impact of several things, why it is coming down? One is the most important is the knowledge, dissemination. What happened to this? If someone does something somewhere, how long it takes today to know about it? Is that right? We can know almost in an instant. So, earlier what was knowledge? When it was discovered, it was pursued, it was codified, published and then teaching to other people. Today almost instantly we can get the knowledge dissemination that means people can. Secondly, the knowledge access that is storage and retrieval. How fast or slow is it now? We can almost immediately get that. Plus, there is now the patents. You know, there are millions of how many patents have increased over the years? Just in these last 30 years, there must have been more than 5 million patents which have come out. So, that means there is a big knowledge, big inventory of these inventions which people can look at and we saw the four things. What was that? Invention, extension, duplication and synthesis. So, there is a lot of scope for extending things or synthesizing things which will give us this capacity plus the market. Earlier markets were in pockets, market for this or market in this region or this country, today we have got almost a global market. When Apple launches its iPhone 6 or Samsung launches its smartphone, what happens? Is it only sold in Korea or USA? It is a global market all around. So, these are all the factors which have made it possible that the time lag now is much lesser than the earlier one. I think the very important example is the transistor 1946-47 the first time they got the working transistor and we can see that the enormous progress in terms of the ICs, the chips, the processors and the devices which came about completely changed in the last 50 years. More changes we have seen based on the new knowledge than the earlier ones. So, these are all the important factors which are the basis for us to be innovative and that is why the entrepreneurs have today a huge opportunity to tap into things which are available, but the real test always keep in mind comes in the not knowledge, not invention, 
which are required but which are not enough. The real test comes if there is what we saw in the first slide, if there is value that means there is something it can, could be very high tech, could have whatever specifications and requirements that can be done, but the test is only when there is a value. Are people buying smart watches, uh, Apple watch? They bought initially, but today we do not know whether it is going to be a big success or not. So therefore, increasingly while there is a big access to technology, knowledge and inventions, the real criteria, real parameter is the value and only when there is a value created and somebody is willing to pay for that value, then there is a new venture which can do the job. So I think we will stop here today. Thank you. Yeah.